Hi everyone. Jesus says in John chapter 10, verse 10, I am come that they may have life and that they may have it more abundantly. Welcome to yet another episode of the Life More Abundantly show, where we share personal testimonies and cover various topics designed to point people to the more abundant life found in Jesus Christ. Just before we go into our episode tonight, I just want to remind you of the online inspirational t-shirt store that's available online called Tees That Testify, where we have long and short sleeve t-shirts, hoodies with various inspirational messages. Please go to teesthattestify.creator-spring.com for more information and to place your order today. It is my honor and privilege to welcome yet another special guest who happens to be one of the twin brothers of the previous guest that we had last month, and that is none other than Pastor Patrick Graham, dear friend of mine. Born and raised in Brooklyn, New York, he graduated from Oakwood University with a bachelor's in theology and a master's in youth ministry from Andrews University. He is happily married to Natalie, the love of his life, and together they have three adult children, Jordan, Joseph, and Jasmine. Pastor Graham began his pastoral ministry in April 2001 and served many churches since then, including DuPont Park, Emmanuel Temple, Columbia Community, Sharon, and Glenridge Seventh-day Adventist churches. Pastor Graham presently serves as the Allegheny East Youth and Children's Ministries Director, a position that he enjoys greatly. He also serves as the Black Adventist Youth Directors Association President, an additional responsibility that gives him the opportunity to impact young lives across the United States. And yet, until recently, he was struggling with anxiety disorder behind closed doors for years. I didn't even realize as one of his friends that he was struggling with this, and we wanna talk about that tonight. Please welcome my dear friend, Pastor Patrick Graham. Hey, how you doing, Marcina? Good to see you. Awesome. First of all, I want to thank you for this opportunity to uh, awesome. to be able to share, and uh, and I, I do wish you blessings on um on your on your show. Thank you. Uh, to make sure that uh, people grow from what you have to offer and the people that come on. So I appreciate it. I appreciate it Absolutely. a lot. Absolutely. You know, um, there is so much anxiety going on. So many anxiety triggers going on with. Um, daily coverage of this war yeah. overseas and everything else. And so I think it's important for people to know that they are not alone mm. and that there are and that there are people that suffer not just from the temporary feelings of anxiety, but that it is actually a disorder and one that you live with, yes. one that you manage by God's grace. And um, I just want to definitely raise that awareness and, and I, I pray that it will definitely help others tonight. Sure. When did your first experience, when did you first experience what you now know to be anxiety disorder? <laughs> well, first, I, I didn't know that you're right, that I didn't, I didn't know it was anxiety, but maybe around 2006, 2007, 2007, I was, um, <clears throat> I was having, um, uh, sweats. Um, I was sweating, couldn't sleep at night. Um, muscle contractions that I was having, you know, couldn't breathe. Um, sometimes even trembling, feeling tired, exhausted, um, uh, just weak, just weak. And I, I didn't know what it was that was going on. I literally thought that I was dying. Um, and, and that is the, the, the beginning of trying to figure out what is going on with my physical body, mm. what was going on with my physical body. So I'm looking at around 2007, I said six, but around 2007, I recognized that something was physically wrong with me. Mm. And, um, and that was the beginning of, uh, of starting to figure out what it was. And, you know, the interesting part about it is. And I think this is important for people to understand because here you are, you know, I've, I've, you know, we grew up together at yeah. Bethel, 
And, right. and, and, I, and I saw you in those early days, um, you and Paul walking in your calling in the ministry and, and preaching and everything else. And then later on, you're, you're each pastoring your, your respective churches and all that. And I'm thinking anxiety, right. you know, when, when, when you first talked about it on Facebook, you had a note and I remember reading this and I said, wow, this is what you were going through. Yeah. This is what you were struggling with. And we had no idea until you revealed that. And I'm glad that you did. And, and it helped to, it was when we first started to talk about uh, the anxiety that you were dealing with. And I also saw a testimony that you have online from a church. I actually saved it in my computer yeah, yeah. and watched it mm -hmm. where you were talking about your anxiety and, and, and preaching on that subject because they were dealing with mental health. Right. And, and this is a very important mental health issue. And people, sometimes they see the personal persona of you being pastor and, and husband and father and all of this, but they don't realize what you're struggling with. Sure. And it's hard for you to talk about that because people expect you That's to it. not have that, you know, have any other problem but that. <laughs> That's right. People, what do you mean anxiety? What? You know, yeah. I'm thinking you're so outgoing. How can you possibly have anxiety? And and I and, and I know that uh, you know, you know, we look at the word coming out, you know, in all different other hidden dangers that yeah. we may have. Um, you know, what ended up happening was that I, I I went to the hospital. I had a doctor and a an Adventist doctor who uh, took care of me. And uh, he said, you know, you're, you're, you're healthy. I said, I can't be, doctor. I can't be. Um, after that, he sent me to an ear doctor because one of the uh, symptoms that I was having was dizziness. And when he took when I went to the ear doctor to see, you know, they thought it was a chip that was in that that had chipped off in my ear, um, you know, which gives me vertigo. I thought it was vertigo. It had the sensation of vertigo, but that wasn't what it was. And they gave me Valium. And um, when I when I went ahead and took Valium, and I have to be honest with you, it was only one time that I did it. I, I could not hang with that Valium. Yeah. At all. It was just it, it just had my head spinning worse than what was before. Oh. The doctor was like, "Keep taking it, so it could build up in your system." I was like, "Nope, sorry, can't do that." Mm -hmm. um, and that was not for anxiety. That was. Yeah. For this air uh, thing that he thought it was, or whatever, or maybe giving me a sugar pill, thinking it was. Then I went to a therapist. Okay. My I went back to my doctor, and my doctor sent me to the therapist. And after being with the therapist, uh, I, after the second visit, but when I got to around to the sixth visit, I recognized that it was something. It was what was going on with with me. Mm -hmm. um, and just as you said it before, high expectations of everyone else, approval, addiction. Mm. I had uh, for everyone else having to be the father, the the home uh, um, uh, maker, to be the pastor, um, uh, to be the father to, to three children, um, making sure the money was right, moving in about two or three years in a house. Uh, uh, are you going to be able to take care of all of that? That's only one side of it. Um, um, but to be able to have the spiritual, um, the spiritual part of it. Uh, um, because I grew up in an Adventist church and grew up as a Christian, I wasn't I wasn't living more uh, for uh, uh, for uh, Christianity more than living for Adventism. So I didn't have that connection that I thought that I needed, or uh, to to be able to survive with everything that was coming at me at one time. Mm. So um, so I was breaking down. Um, mm. I, I I lost. I lost a tremendous amount of weight because I couldn't eat. Uh, once I ate, I would always throw it up. You know, so, oh. so it was. I couldn't do that. I'm driving the kids to school. I fall asleep at the light. Um, sometimes I would park into GE Peters parking lot and just park there and just go to sleep because I felt that because I was in between the church, uh, Metro Church, and 
maybe the angels were around me to protect me. I thought I was dying of cancer. We did CAT scans. We did <clears throat> all kinds of scans. And I came back to another specialist that said, there's nothing wrong with you. <clears throat> you, know, it's, it, you know, so I'm going to tell you this. Anxiety cannot kill you. Right? It's, what, it, it, it's, it's a symptom of a deeper problem that's there. And um, I decided at that very moment that once I found out what it was, mm -hmm. um, and, and, and mine is both anxiety and depression. The anxiety, mm -hmm. the anxiety caused depression for the amount mm -hmm. of could not do. So it brought on the depression. Usually anxiety comes first in this case, and then comes depression. Mm -hmm. but I do want to share with you that the majority of these things were, were behavioral, okay? Mm -hmm. um, um, uh, I'm not going to say it's easier to change. It's challenging to change, but I know that if you, if I wanted to get better, I had to do something. Right. Um, and and one of the things that I decided to do was to share my journey. Um, even before I got out of it, you know, I was sharing the journey while I was still uh, in, in depression um, and and anxiety, and I decided that I needed to work at it right away. Yes. And, um, I, I've gotten some people who have written, who've called Marcino, who said, mm -hmm. um, um, I'm ashamed of you for, you know, you're a pastor and what? You, you shouldn't, you, you know, you should not feel the, this way. Um, yeah. uh, you know, I, I even had someone else say that it, it it's uh, uh, demonic uh, possession. Wow. Um, so many different things that people, mm. uh, you know, unconverted, all those type of things. And, uh, and but the thing about it is that it, it taught me how to be, um, how not to use those same approval addictions. That's it. Go back into the cycle again. That's right. right. So if I chose to go out there and teach someone mm -hmm. or to let someone know what, what's going on with me, then um, yes. the floodgates opened up N every day from the day that I uh, put it on social media that this mm. was my struggle. There's not a day that passed by that someone hasn't checked in on me or have said, hey, this is what I'm going through. Thank goodness. Um, and and so I feel, especially youth, especially young people. Um, uh, so I have to say that um, that coming out to say that I have has been part of the healing process mm -hmm. and um, there is a healing, but there's some more that comes along with that. Now we'll talk about yes. that as we go along, but there is a healing side of it. And, Absolutely. Um, and, and, and I, I do believe that after I've said it, after I've discussed it, yes. after, um, I believe that, uh, that that was the beginning for me, therapy and being able to speak about it. That's right. What you know, me. And, and that's the thing. One of the things that I am determined by the grace of God to do is to remove the stigma of seeking professional help. That's right. Because we are not less believers in Jesus Christ because we seek professional help. We're not Sorry. less believers in Jesus Christ because we may need something to help balance us out. We're not less than believers because we seek therapy. Sure. If anything... This helps us to maintain our walk with God to go get the help that we need. Yeah. And there are people that are suffering with these disorders. Mm -hmm. and, and that's what it is. It's a disorder. You're sure yeah. right. And, mm -hmm. and see, what happens is we have to be careful as Christians when we look at a person and when people are revealing what God has taken them through. We have to be careful that we don't judge them and look down on them and think, you know, how can you reveal such a thing? And I'm thinking, listen, um, I would rather we talk about this than, than have one of these other problems where there's scandals and all that. And, and we've heard of other people that have had far worse scandals. I do not consider a pastor having anxiety disorder <laughs> so horrible. I'm sorry. I, I just don't. And, yeah. and I'm thankful that you did reveal that because it helped open my eyes. I know we had some good talks during during that. We oh, had some man. great talks. I remember when you when you had a clip, you were sharing a clip about how thin you were. Yes. And yes. you looked like you know you and 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 your brother are twins yeah. anyway. Sure. So I'm like, oh, that was yeah. Yeah, I was always heavier. Mm -hmm. um, 
but I didn't have this. I'll be honest. Yeah, you know, I didn't yeah. have all this. Yeah, um, we can see the difference now, but yeah. back in the day, you know, it was just very slight. If if the two of you were separate, we could not tell. So I was 100. Right now, I'm I'm 160, 165. Mm -hmm. Fluctuate between 160 and 165. COVID yeah. put COVID has helped <laughs> to put a that on. <laughs> But when I was going through the height of anxiety, I was about 119, 119. And that's where, that, that's how I knew something was, wasn't working. My eyes was, was starting to sink into the back of, you know, to your inside in that, your head. And, and I was also uh, uh, unkept, you know, um, oh. unkept, uh, because it took too much to get out of bed. Mm -hmm. It took a lot to get to the shower hmm. it took it it took a lot of energy to brush your teeth wow it took a lot of, and that's the and that's the depression side mm -hmm. it, um so it, it, it took it took a whole lot just to get get yourself going and rem reminding you now i'm preaching every sabbath every hmm. saturday um, um yeah. i'm doing wednesday night prayer meetings i'm holding meetings um um, and dealing with the saints and visiting, um, you know, all of those things at the same time. And yet you still have to take care of home. So you're coming home more frustrated with your children. You're f coming home more frustrated with your wife. You come in, you know, you're, you're, you're not, you're not, you know, let's be realistic here. You're not even performing the duties that you need to perform as a father, as a husband, um, in all measures. And, you know, it, it is all coming down at you at one time to the point where you say to yourself, I'm too cowardly to commit suicide, hmm. but I, I hope I don't wake up tomorrow. Wow. And, and to tell you the truth, it's the same language. Mm -hmm. Nobody fool you. Uh, I learned that now that even when somebody says, I don't want to wake up tomorrow, it's the same kind of thing. Hey, I, I want to want to commit suicide. So therapy, active therapy worked. Uh, began for me, um, and a spiritual therapy. I have to tell you, is what it, 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 it's 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 really. I had a, I have a mother who prays. Thank God, yes. And and but but I have to also let you know when you're going through anxiety and you're going through depression, you disconnect from people. Uh, you don't want to be around them. You don't want to be around people. And um, and it's anxiety that you have to even show up around people or to say, mom, I'm sick or mom, I don't feel well or for your family to know. So what you do, you become a hermit in your own house and you suffer through that um, and you just become one that relies on timing. You know, you're going through the same circular day every day and just wishing that you just you just won't wake up the next day. And that's when I knew you know, it, it was important to uh, actually make that change. Yes, absolutely. In fact, um, I know you were talking, I guess you answered question number two, what was your struggle yeah. like before your diagnosis and how it affected your family and your ministry? Oh, it, it did, it did. Mm -hmm. I mean, Marcina, I gotta tell you, there were, there were times when I was, um, I had to go to the internet for sermons. Now, mm -hmm. I, would, I would deliver them, but I didn't study them. You know, sermons are supposed to come from your heart. Sermons are supposed to come from the spirit of God um, laying hands on you and and um, helping those in your congregation and staying towards a thematic structure. Um, I couldn't do that. Um, I couldn't I couldn't stay up to study. So I would download sermons and read them and read them and read them and 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 be able to. Uh, uh, deliver it the way I know how best, and um, it's not fair to your your congregation. It's not fair uh, um, to uh, to to the pulpit, and um, and I knew then when it, that, that's how it affected work. Um, we had meetings that I didn't like to attend wow. um, because what came out of that type of anxiety also came out social anxiety came out of that which is something that i'm still managing mm -hmm. i don't like even up to this day i don't like uh, uh going out to eat um uh when i say going out to eat if uh, i can go out to eat with my family but i don't mm -hmm. like going out to eat with other people <laughs> you know what i mean uh, i don't i don't enjoy small talk mm -hmm. um I, I don't i i don't um 
I don't do those type of things well. Mm -hmm. I don't like, <laughs> this is going to sound crazy, but it, I have to rev up to get to a camp meeting. I have to wow. rev up to, um, to be in a large crowd. Yeah. Um, um, so now, can I do it? Sure, I can. Uh, I it better now than I had before. Mm -hmm. but, um, so imagine going out to eat with your colleagues and you can't eat because you're afraid that if you eat, you're going to throw up because you have social anxiety. anxiety. You know? oh. Oh, man. It, it just kept count, compounding and compounding. But th oh, there's th there was a solution for me. And that's what I shared the most with the oh. solution for me. You know, and, and this is and, and mind you, there are people who are in other professions, doctors, attorneys, teachers, and others who, if you look on the outside, you would never think no. that was their problem mm -hmm. until oh, no. they reveal things such as what you're talking about, all of this stuff going on. And can you imagine how, but can you imagine how youth feel? You, wow. the youth, can you imagine what children are going through that have yes. anxiety? If, if here I am a grown man and dealing mm -hmm. with this thing and, and having the ability to, well, what about a, a parent who's not looking out or thinking that their child is wayward or mm -hmm. their child is, is just hitting a brick wall or something right. like that and not being able to diagnose or, you know, right. even in our black community, we, we yes. have, we, we have a, we have a discontent with therapists, mm -hmm. you know, to send your child to therapy. What are you saying? Something is wrong with my child. Um, um, so we have a lot of children that yes. uh, adolescents that go through anxiety and depression and we bypass those type of things. And it only gets worse if it's not managed. It only gets worse. Have mercy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What was the turning point for you that led you to seek professional help? What was that moment where, you know, it was just clear to you, I have to get help for this or it will take me down? Yeah. Um, the, the, I think the, the turning point for me was when I, uh, we mentioned it earlier before, when I didn't want to wake up the next day. The turning point for me was when I, I could not see. Today is, today is or let's say Monday, I could not see Tuesday. Uh, there, so that, that's when I recognized I was losing hope in the world. I was losing hope uh, in, at my job. I was losing hope with my family, just life, period. I knew when I, I hit that brick wall, even physically, um, I knew I, something was wrong. I, it wasn't cancer. It wasn't um, diabetes. It wasn't any of those things, which would have been great because I'll know what to do with it. But I knew even when I was losing weight, couldn't even fit the, fit the clothes that I had on. I knew then, OK, it, it, it's time. It's time. It was nothing big that happened. I just knew when I hit a brick wall that I couldn't function normally in the day. That's when um, I went to see a therapist uh, and that's where the beginning of it came. Yes, indeed. and thank God for that, for those moments because that's when the Lord will help us to see it's time, my sure. son, it's time, my daughter, to get the help that is necessary. That's right. That's right. So what tools do you use to manage your anxiety? <laughs> I, uh, and I, I'm grateful that you use the word manage and not uh, get rid of anxiety. You're not going to get rid of anxiety. We live in a world of stress. We live in a world of disorder. We live in a world that is um, that is is um, tr tremendously falling apart i mean it's this is just where we live um what i did i when i saw my uh, my therapist after i got to like the fourth fifth sixth time of seeing my therapist um i had to do something at work i had to do something at home um and immediately what i started to do at that point was recognize that i needed a higher power um I didn't need an Adventist God. I needed my own God. I I I, I didn't. I could no longer um, try to deal with my parents' God that I knew for so long. I now needed to have a personal relationship with God, mm -hmm. um, where I would not be judged, but would be loved, um, in spite of you know. Because I want you to know something. Even with anxiety and depression, you start to bring on certain habits. 
um, destructive habits. Um, mm -hmm. um, and, and those are the things you go to because they have those quick serotonin levels that, that, you know, that, that you know, if it, if it gives you a boost for like five minutes, you take it, you know, you take mm -hmm. it, it might be. So, um, I had to have a connection with God. Mm -hmm. um, um, specifically my mother prayed for me. Yes. Um, I, I started to wake up at five o'clock in the morning to see God. See mm -hmm. God. I didn't say I read. I didn't say that I prayed. I didn't say anything. I just met him at the footstool of the bed. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I didn't get up. I didn't get on my knees. None of those type of things. And I'm just sorry I didn't do that. And I know I just needed to meet him every day so that I knew that there was a higher being. There was a higher power that was there every day for me. Mm -hmm. and, and, and that's when I fell in love with him. You know, mm -hmm. I in love with him every day. That was the beginning for me. I um I got rid of certain friends. I got rid of friends that um that were no longer. You know, I'll go to the distance and say it this way: I, I hung out with people, pastors that I decided I couldn't hang out with anymore. Mm. Not that they did anything wrong, but it didn't fit, it didn't fit the healing side. It didn't hit the man. Mm managing side for me and they couldn't understand so i needed to move right. on without them right um, there are certain things i stopped watching i stopped watching the news I, yeah. uh, um that was a big um problem for me um because the news uh make money on on um fear okay and, and um I'm, I'm giving you some really quick stuff that that i remember doing right away uh, yep. i went to sleep with um hymns yeah, my gospel. Um, uh, uh, but I went to sleep with hymns, uh, orchestra, uh, meditation type um, um, music that will cut off after a little while. Mm -hmm. uh, I changed my eating habits. Mm -hmm. um, um, I didn't eat certain things. You know, you, there are certain foods that will uh, greasy foods, all those type of foods will exacerbate anxiety. Believe it or not, mm -hmm. those things are true. All right, so you do a lot of um you know coming out of the winter a lot of uh, vitamin d i was doing flax seed i was doing oatmeal because i had to start right. again all over again like a baby i'm doing oatmeal you know mm -hmm. um and cream of wheat and you know what i mean i was starting all over again and you going you going old school now we yeah 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 no really i was yeah. uh you, you know you have to drink a certain amount of water in order to stay flushed and hydrated mm -hmm. um and um and i started to go to bed you ready for this mm -hmm. i started to go to bed before 10 o'clock okay. I, I didn't necessarily go to sleep but i went to bed before that mm -hmm. um, um but you know those times you keep the tv on you keep no nah, nothing i didn't bring the computer my, my computer does not come to bed with me anymore okay. um you know my my phone is there that's a problem but I, I sleep better with the phone on the uh, table and not next to me. Remember, these are all approval type things because you yeah. want to answer the phone if a member should call. Uh -uh. They, don't, they don't understand. Keep your phone over here. So those were the quick um, pieces. Started to read the word of God. So a lot of it became spiritual for me. Uh -huh. But I did not allow the spirituality to be at a place of the do's and don'ts because what ends up happening with me is that if I keep looking at a God as a check mark God, mm -hmm. you check off everything you do right or do wrong, then it'll cause my anxiety to come around again. Mercy. What I recognize God as is a fear of God. I looked at a God that loved me. I looked yes. at a God that wanted me to be well. Mm -hmm. And and because of our relationship, you know, God doesn't want me to feel nervous. He doesn't want me to have panic attacks. God, okay. you know, I serve a God who don't, who don't want me sweating just because I'm thinking about some type of fear. The Bible yes. tells us, um, be anxious for nothing. Mm. But by praying and, you know, and fasting. I'm and, glad you brought and, that up because mm -hmm. I know that I, I was thinking about that verse mm -hmm. and I'm glad that you're the one that's talking about it because we don't want to miss, we don't want to, um, twist the scriptures out of its proper meaning no no and, but but the bible does tell us be anxious for nothing but with prayer and supplication with That's thanksgiving right. make That's our right. requests known unto god That's and right. i understand what you're saying that there are certain things there's a certain things i don't deal with and it's not because i'm not i'm trying to stick my head in the sand That's or right. not be aware or whatever but listen the bible already told me 
about certain things that was going to happen before the second coming. That's I did not need to bombard my brain with right. all this depressing stuff on the six o'clock news 24 seven. I just That's don't right. need to do that. Yeah. And whatever happened today is going to happen tomorrow. But here's okay. the biggest part of the text. It says, for God uh, gave us not the spirit of fear, mm -hmm. right? but of power, love. And they say a sound mind. But that word really means self-control. Mm. Right. So you got to get to a place. Hey, listen, you ready for this, too? Mm. I I'm more anxious now. And we're talking about managing this thing. This is okay. not talking about something that's healed. This is this is something you have to manage. Mm. So if I'm not ready for a meeting, my anxiety is going to fly out the roof. If I'm going to go somewhere that I don't want to be, anxiety will fly mm. out the roof. There are certain things that you have to let your nay be nays and your yays be yays. Right? So, and, and that helps you with the anxiety. I now keep um, a calendar. You know what I mean? And uh, if something is in that calendar, if I put in there, this is my rest weekend, it's my rest weekend. That's it. Right? And uh, I don't, I, no one's going to die if I don't make it somewhere, right? Ooh. No one's going to fall apart if I don't make it somewhere. So that's the part two that deals with approval addiction that you want everybody to love you, right. but, your, but your anxiety gets mm -hmm. high over that. I dealt with prayer and, um, and I also, uh, like, a, 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 you know, a vegetarian diet did help at that point. Um, one of the reasons why it did help is because my body, my mind is telling me that I'm working on this thing. I'm managing it. And so I watched everything that I ate, not for the negative side of it. I enjoyed what I was eating. I enjoyed what I was listening to. And, um, and to be honest with you, uh, the healing came. Uh, but it took a while. It took about really about two years for it to really start working. Um, to so you start to see the changes. See, anxiety could break you down very quick, but to be able to turn around and start to manage it, you got to have some type of discipline and people working around you and prayer mm -hmm. and all of that. You have them old ladies in the church. Let them pray for you. Tell them what you're yes. going through. You know, because if listen, if you broke your foot, you'd have to wear a cast. Am I right? I mean, exactly. right. So when you have an, a mental crisis, mm -hmm. um, it's it, it's good for someone to know that you have a that you're having that crisis because no one could see the cast in your mind. No one could see the fixing that's going on in your mind. Mm -hmm. So um. And, and here's the thing, I know when the anxiety has come back mm -hmm. or it's mismanaged, mm -hmm. because those same triggers start to come back around again. And that's what I thank God for. Yeah. Thank God for those same type of triggers. So I don't have panic attacks anymore, but I know what it feels like when it's coming. Yes. You see what I'm saying? So now... Um, when a panic attack, I feel my heart start to race. I have now a breathing technique. Okay. That's the physical side of it. But the, the but the spiritual side of it is, God, why is it that I'm not sleeping at night? This is what Ooh. has actually happened. I mean, those are the type of things you got to kind of read. Why am I not sleeping wow. at night? Um, 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 why is it that, um, that I'm feeling this way? Why am I feeling hopeless right now? What is going on? Then you realize, good night. I have not done personal devotion you heard what i said mm. but did you hear the word that i just used personal devotion personal devotion not 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 devotion with your with your with my co-workers that we have every morning not not that i'm talking about personal All devotion yes devotion. yeah and when you start to have that personal devotion when you start to um start to manage and i still see a therapist now i don't see a therapist um every week like i was seeing them before mm -hmm. But I know when I need them. Yes. Right. I know that I could walk in there and whatever I said, whatever I was struggling with, whatever I was dealing with, mm -hmm. whatever thoughts that I had, I knew right away that I could say to my therapist and my therapist can't tell a soul. There you go. You, you, you get where I'm going? I was yes. able to I was able to crap on my therapist. That's what they're there for. And by the way. God has God has given people the spirit of counsel in Mike. You better believe it. He's given people that 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 ability. And listen, I go as needed. I don't I don't, you know, maybe not as often, but when I'm if I'm getting to that point, I'm like, okay, right. I need to go, I need to go see one. And now I don't suffer from the anxiety, I suffer from the depression. Right. And right. 
you know, I'm able to, as needed, get the help that's 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 there. And it's so much better when the Lord is showing you, okay, this is what you need to avoid. This is what you need to stop sure. doing. This is what you need to just, you know, this is the stuff you do not need to have. That's right. So that you're able to move forward and able to function. That's and right. a lot, it's a lot easier when when you have that. So I think, and also when we talk about that verse, be anxious for nothing, it's meant for us not to be ashamed that we have these challenges. Sure. It's meant for us to know that we can turn to the Lord. Right. That we don't have to continue to suffer with sure. this by ourselves. I have a book. We have, him, we have his strength. We have his, his power. We have access to the Holy Spirit. That's right. Um, it's like, okay, Lord, this is what I'm suffering from. Lord, this is what's making me anxious. This is what's making me afraid. That's right. You know, Lord, I'm I'm feeling these triggers. You know, this, you know, that that news I was not trying to hear. I, you know, I'm I'm dealing with this. Lord, I need you. And 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 that's that's what makes all the difference sure. in the world. You know, I have a book that um one of my mentors, David Defoe, Pastor Dr. David Defoe, he this was written by Mark Baker. Said Jesus, the greatest therapist who ever lived, uh -huh. the greatest therapist who ever lived, and it's right. an it's it's an awesome book because you can go now through the Gospels and see Jesus doing therapy. Mm. <laughs> right? um, great book, um, um, and I love what you what you said. Um, the Word of God helps but, but now there's maybe someone who's listening that may not be a um a christian mm -hmm. uh, who may not follow any um any uh religion per se maybe they're spiritual people but they're not uh following a religion no matter what you do in life there always has to be something bigger than yourself oh yes always right and um and that's what you have to rely on because um um uh, we didn't get here by happenstance when god tells us uh when the bible tells us don't don't be anxious for anything it's the relationship with god that no longer uh makes us anxious or lessens our anxiety i'd rather say lessens our anxiety because the truth is that if you have something or someone that is controlling i don't want to say the word controlling but leading you in your life um you start you start the weight of the world starts to come off of you um give it to someone who can handle it right give it over to someone who can handle it and that's where i believe um that's why i believe in jesus that's why i have a personal relationship with him because sometimes managing my anxiety can get out of control you know i could watch one movie and it can wreck my anxiety. I could, I could watch the news one time, and it could wreck my anxiety. So you always have to be on top of your game, knowing what is the problem. I give you a great example. I like TikTok. I mean, I, I, I call it whatever. I mean, these new uh, social media stuff. You can find anything on these things. And um, there was one thing that I saw with with a head-on collision. You know, it's oh. it's cool to see crashes and all that, but we got to remember somebody was in that car, right? Yes, he was in. You know, we don't we, you know, we we are, we become desensitized to what's going on in the world until you get behind the wheel and think, oh, mercy. this could happen to me today, and yeah. then fear starts to build up. Uh -huh. Fear that mortgage may not be paid, that rent may not be paid. Fear that the lights may go off. Uh, oh. fear, that, fear that somebody's not going to like you fear that you won't reach a certain position uh that your wife might leave you or things are not working out right now that your children are going to be wayward there's so many things that could happen to you at one time imagine not taking all of that and giving it to someone the oh. same way that you give it to the therapist and you walk out of that therapist's office and that therapist says hey it's the same way you could give it to jesus and then yes. to help you manage that thing as you go right on. so i'm not telling you to go to jesus and not have a therapist i'm going to no. say have both there you go have both and That's you're going to see things start to work uh work uh in tandem 
with um, living a more healthier lifestyle or more mental yeah. lifestyle. Now, I want to tell you this. Mine is more behavioral um, where I could make those changes. I, I, um, anxiety or living in anxiety does have a, a genetic structure to it. Mm -hmm. um, I just want, want to share that with everyone. But the key to it is that if you could manage it, if you have 100% of anxiety and you can manage it to 80%, and you can manage it to 70%. You're doing better than you did the day before. Yes. And you keep managing this thing, keep managing this thing, not till it's gone, but it is actually on another side. You can you can put a leash around anxiety. You know what I mean? You yeah. can just like to lock up anxiety, put it to the side. And that's that's what I um um that's what I tend intend to do in ministry. Yes. Uh I just want to tell you this that uh, I went back to school. Mm -hmm. um, which I had to get this old brain working again. Um, but I went back to school and I did my uh, master's in uh, counseling uh, psych, right. psych as a, a therapist. Um, so right now I'm uh, working to, to get my license for the state. Oh, praise God. Uh, get my license for the state of everywhere within the conference that I work in. So I'd yes. like to New Jersey, Pennsylvania, uh, all, of, uh, all of our territory uh, I'd love to do. And... Um, <laughs> And 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 I'm not leaving the work. No, there's too there's too much happening in the church. Uh -huh. That I want people to be able to trust me with their children, trust me with their youth and adolescents, yes. and and um trust trust to know that there's a way out. Yes, uh, suicide is too high. Mercy. Um, depression, anxiety is high. You know, we have people who through imbalances, chemical imbalances of bipolar. We fight with narcissism every day in the boardroom. You know, there's so much that's going on. So I'm not, I don't intend to leave pastoral work. What God has given me the opportunity to do is he's equipped me with something more. And Marcina, let me just share this with you. I have the opportunity after going to school for, for actually I did it in two years. Mm -hmm. I have the opportunity of seeing people through a different lens mm. change my perspective yes um it has changed my um my way of seeing the word of god mm -hmm. and, and how it um it applies to everyone's life yeah i see the changes in that and um so i, I thank I thank god to have, for the ability to have gone now my goal is to spread the gospel yes um without trauma mm. <laughs> And you know this is so important because we need people. We need we need more we need more pastors and we need more counselors. You know because some people can do like what you're doing and get that master's degree in in counseling and and sure. others other pastors they need to refer to somebody right. who has that spirit of counsel and who went to school exclusively for that. Right. And we need both. Right. We need both. We need both because there are people going through stuff in the church mm -hmm. and there's even people going through things in the community. Right. And if people can see our churches as a safe haven, not only in other areas like, you know, praise the Lord for Sabbath rest and praise the Lord for for a health message and whatever, but mm -hmm. also see that this is a place you can come to mm -hmm. for biblically based counseling sure if people can see that that's a tremendous ministry that people need especially now with all the things that have gone on especially in the last two years we're dealing with we're still trying to deal with covid we're still dealing we're dealing now with a, with a war overseas that's we're right. dealing with all of these other types of anxieties that's and right. this is now the time where we want the lord to use those who have that gift whether they have that gift um, naturally, whether they have to acquire it, you know, education wise. And I sure. encourage you, please go get your education. Sure. Please get certified. Sure. Please do that so that you have the official tools by the grace of God to do what you're doing. That's right. And at the same time, still have the word of God. That's right. That's right. That's Praise right. the Lord. That's Thank right. you so much for sharing. Oh, no problem. We're now going to have a word of prayer. Lord Jesus, I want to thank you so much for helping us to just be open and to be real with you 
And we pray, Lord, for anyone right now who is suffering from anxiety, who's suffering from depression, who's suffering from all of these things, who's being triggered by all the stuff going on in the news and even in their own lives. Lord, we ask that you will please help them to seek the help that they need, point them to the help that they need, point them to the professional help they need, point them to the things health-wise that they need to do, point them to that, Lord, in the name of Jesus, and help them, Lord, to be encouraged by this broadcast to seek the help that is necessary, knowing that you will never leave nor forsake us. In Jesus' name, we thank you. Jesus. Amen. Amen. Thanks again for having me. Honestly, yeah. I had a great time so far. Absolutely. And now we leave you with the words of John chapter 10, verse 10. I am come that they may have life and that they may have it more abundantly. God bless and keep you is our prayer. Have a good night. Good night.